Hello everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper, and it is time for the next video in our How to Play series on the French battleship line. This is the Corbet class of battleships. The Corbet class was the first dreadnoughts built for the French Navy prior to World War I. There were four ships built between 1910 and 1914, and they are Corbet, France, Jean Vat, and Paris. The Corbet class Battleships were a revolutionary design for their period in that they employed a belt line that extended well below the waterline compared to other dreadnoughts built by other nations. They also sported direct drive turbines, steam turbines, for propulsion instead of what most nations were using, which was the triple expansion steam engine. They would also later receive geared turbines as part of their refits. The downside to the Corbet class was that it was, compared to other contemporaries, pretty poorly armored. The deep armor belt covered more of the ship, but had to be thinner to keep the tonnage in check. They also employed smaller 138mm guns for their secondaries, as opposed to the 150-156mm to secondaries of other nations. The upside to the secondary armament arrangement was that it was significantly quicker at taking out enemy torpedo boats before they could get in and launch their torpedoes. In terms of service history, all four ships were in service by 1914, with their pre-World War I operations consisting mostly of traveling abroad with French dignitaries. France and Jean Bart carried the President of France on a state visit to St. Petersburg, and that was in Russia in July of 1914, and while on their way home, World War I broke out. Upon returning home, they met with Corbet and Paris to be stationed in the Mediterranean Sea to contain the Austro uh, Austro-Hungarian fleet. Jean Bart would take part in the sinking of the protected cruiser Zenta off Bar in 1914. On 21 December 1914, the German U-boat U-12 hit Jean Bart with a torpedo in the wine store. Yes, the wine store. That would be the place where they're storing all the wine on board the ship. I am not kidding you. This was in front of the forward magazine, which caused several months worth of repairs to be uh, conducted on the ship. Um, it also forced the French uh, Navy to withdraw all of their battleships back to Malta, where they spent the remainder of World War I... Uh, occupying various islands to include the uh, Greek island of Corfu in 1916. And the reason why they spent the rest of their time in World War I there is because the majority of their crew had been transferred to anti-submarine ships. Post-World War I, the ships were refitted several times to fix several of the class's deficiencies. In April of 1919, the ships France and Jean Bart were stationed in Sevastopol, Ukraine, defending it from the Bolsheviks while their ship's crews mutinied due to a desire to go home. Uh, the mutiny was peacefully resolved, and the ships returned to France uh, thanks to a uh, agreement being formed with the captains of the ships. France, in 1922, struck an uncharted rock in the Quiberon Bay at low tide and was sunk, killing three, becoming a... Tr uh, killing three people, and that was the only one of the four ships to actually be sunk uh, due to unintended consequences, I guess. Um, one other one we'll see in a minute was also sunk, but for different reasons. Jean Bart underwent extensive modernization, but due to her poor condition, she was demilitarized and became a training ship, and... Uh, that was at Toulon, and in 1936, she was re renamed to Ocean. Ocean. <laughs> the name would be reused in the Richelieu class battleships, and Jean Bart in the Richelieu class did not go on to enjoy a very successful career until after World War II. In 1920, Corbet became a gunnery training ship through the interwar period. She was refit several times prior to World War II. Perry was sent to Pula to advise the Austro to supervise the Austro-Hungarian fleet and she supported Greek troops during the occupation of Izmir, and she attacked coastal batteries during the Rif War in French Morocco. In 1931, she'd become a training ship. Corbeau and Paris remained, or sorry, Corbet and Paris uh, remained as training ships through World War II and were based in the Atlantic. 
While under refit at Cherbourg, Corbet was ordered to fire upon the advancing German tanks and covered the evacuation of the town by the Allies. Paris supported the defenders of Le Havre during the same time. Neither proved to be particularly effective due to the absence of spotting aircraft or ground-based spotting to adjust fire. Paris would be damaged by German bomb in 1940. Uh, upon arrival in Cherbourg for repairs, she quickly took on 2,800 men and sailed for Plymouth in the UK, where she was seized by the Royal Navy. She'd be utilized as a depot and a barrack ship by the Royal Navy, and then by the Polish Navy. And in July of 1945, she would be returned to the Free French Forces. She was then towed to Brest and remained there as a depot, tip and depot ship until she was broken up in 1956. Corbet sailed for Portsmouth on the 20th of June 1940 and was seized by the Royal Navy. She'd be turned over to the Free French a week after being seized and then used as a depot and anti-aircraft ship in Portsmouth until uh, March 31st, 1941. She would then be disarmed and then was taken to, Nor to the Normandy coast and sunk as a breakwater after the Allied invasion of Normandy. In terms of in-game play style, Corbet is just like every other Tier 4 battleship. Slow inaccurate, and, well, a short grind, thankfully. Uh, as far as Tier 4 battleships go, I, I think Corbet is, is one of the stronger ones. However, um, she does have some faults. She's not particularly durable. Her guns t have very, very high arcs, which uh, make most U.S. high-tier battleship captains feel right at home. But they seem to lack a lot of penetration for 12-inch guns, and damage seems to be kind of unreliable. In terms of AA defense, there's also none. The ship is, however, reasonably maneuverable. It does have a tight turning circle radius and a reasonably effective rudder, which matters a lot. The, other only, the only other real downside to this ship is that uh, to bring her rear two turrets to bear, you really have to expose a lot of the broadside of the ship and that can open you up to taking a lot of damage. However, she does have the ability to bring to bear at least three gun uh, six total barrels, three turrets, at all, pretty much all times, thanks to the two wing turrets. All right, let's talk about some stats. Corbet has 41,000 hit points, up to 400 millimeters of armor, which is on the back of the turret. Here we can see the armor profile. It is a incremental armor scheme. And uh, you can see there the deep water belt, the water line is all the way up here. But all of this stuff up here is really lightly armored compared to the rest of the ship, and thus you take a lot of damage. Torpedo damage reduction is only 13%. Main battery consists of six twin 305mm guns. They are mounted in two super firing turrets up front, super firing meaning one can fire over the other two wing turrets in the middle, and then a super firing pair in the rear. The secondary battery consists of 22 single 139 millimeter gun mounts, and they have a firing range of four and a half kilometers, 10 second reload, so not exactly the most effective secondaries at this tier. Of course, the Arkansas Beta has the best secondaries at this tier. Anyway, uh, main battery firing range, 17.4K in range, 30-second reload time, 180-degree turn time of the turrets of 48.6 seconds, 237-meter dispersion. HE shells are going to do 4,200 damage with a 22% chance of starting a fire. AP, 8,300 damage with 17.4 kilometers in range. There is a difference in velocity between the AP and HE shells. The AP shells are slower. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, you have uh, eight single 13.2 millimeter guns, eight dual 13.2 millimeter guns, and eight 75 millimeter guns. In terms of maneuverability, max speed of just 21 knots, 580 meter turning circle radius, and 12.3 second rudder shift time. In terms of detection range, 15.4 kilometers by sea and 9.4 kilometers by air. Not exactly the stealthiest of battleships in the game, probably due to these lar this large tripod mast and this large rear mast. All right, let's talk about some upgrades. In the first slot for the upgrades, I'm running Main Armaments Mod 1. This is going to reduce the chance of your main battery getting incapacitated by 20%. 
It's also going to decrease the time it takes to repair them by 20%, as well as increase the hit point pool by 50%. We don't have any torpedo tubes, so the rest of that doesn't really matter. The only other one at this tier, at this upgrade slot that I would run is probably Magazine Mod 1, but quite honestly, getting detonated in a battleship is pretty rare. Usually happens when you eat a lot of torpedoes, and at that point you're probably dead anyway. Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, you know, your secondaries really don't get into range very often. I mean, unless you're putting a high captain point, high point captain on this ship to get, you know, your secondary range boosted out there, there's really no reason to run this, in my opinion, because your secondaries really don't do much, and AA is basically non-existent anyway. In the second slot, I'm running Damage Control Systems Mod 1 for the 5% reduction in the risk of catching fire, as well as a 3% reduction in the risk of flooding. At this tier, this is really the only upgrade that I would recommend for battleships. Uh, propulsion Mod 1 and Steering Gears Mod 1, you know, it reduces the chance of losing your engines or your steering by 20% and decreases the time it takes to repair them by 20%. Neither one of those things happen often enough to really be a problem, and usually if they do, again, they usually happen because of torpedoes. So, again, I would recommend running Damage Control Systems Mod 1, just because I think it's a much more flexible uh, upgrade at this slot. Alright, well, that's enough talking about this ship in port. Let's go look at it in a battle video. Alright, so, Corbet, you know... Like I, like I mentioned, the, the main battery seems to have a really, really, really weak, uh, like, muzzle velocity. And I, I think once you get used to the guns, it can be quite a lot of fun to play this ship. I mean, you've got a lot of guns, but as you can see here, we are in a Tier 5 fight. This is going to be extremely common for Tier 4 ships. Um, it, it basically comes down to biding your time and praying that, uh, you know, some of your ships can take out some of the harder hitting ships in the match. The map is straight, which is not a bad map. It's not my favorite map either. There's, um, I, I don't know. I could see this map being, being rotated 90 degrees and I think it would be a much better map. But anyway, uh, usually on this map, I tend to fight towards the center, but at the beginning of this, we are going to sail off towards the Southeast simply because um, I, I think, and, and this, usually what ends up happening is, is the southern force for the enemy spawn, they tend to go towards the middle of the map, and if I can go towards the southeast, I will be able to engage a lot of ships and their broadsides. And um, if we go towards the northeast, you know, we might get lucky, maybe they'll go to the south, I don't know. But um, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get to sailing here. We've got a fairly healthy amount of battleships. Not a whole lot of destroyers in the match. It seems pretty well balanced as far as class composition goes. Of course, Königsberg Berg, and Phoenix are going to be two fun ships to shoot at because both of them are particularly squishy. Uh, they both accept citadels quite readily, and these 12-inch guns are more than happy to give them to the cruisers. So our whole team is sailing off that way. Quick inspection here of our uh, ships. It looks like uh, we've got an upgraded Wyoming and uh, upgraded Orion. And we kind of got a little bit of a battle line forming. This is kind of fun. It's not every day that you get a, get to form a little battle line like that. And as you can see, we're already detected, and of course we can't detect what's shooting at us. We are spotted from the moon. Ah, but it's an Izyaslav. And as we know, Izyaslav is most definitely a Slav. So this is what I was talking about with the guns. You know, you can bring to bear six barrels fairly easily, but look at the shell, the, the arcs on them. I mean, you really have to lead way out in front of some of these ships in order to get to get consistent hits. And it can be a little frustrating. They, they come down what seems very, like a very steep angle, which can sometimes help penetrate into citadels of enemy ships, but you do have to be extremely careful that the ships you're shooting at, they're not better off protected underwater. Um, if you're shooting at a St. Louis at range, the uh, Tier 3 St. Louis, the U.S. Light Cruiser, or protected cruiser, as the case may be, um, you can actually uh, enjoy <laughs> some reasonable success there. 
Oh, and down goes a get rule. So that kind of stinks, but uh, <laughs> we just shot at that Koenigsberg and missed. Entirely missed. <sighs> well, it's, it's something that you're going to have to get used to. Uh, these low tier battleships are not particularly accurate at their max ranges, which 17.4k seems like a really quite excessive, but. Okay, eh, I think we're gonna shoot at the Koenigsberg. I think it's gonna be a much better target to engage anyway. Okay, so we got our lead. All of our guns shot except for the one that can't engage. Ooh, that looks pretty. Yes! 19,000 damage in one salvo. Dev Strike! Moving on to the next cruiser to Dev Strike. <laughs> it appears that the vast majority of their team is moving towards the south, so. I think once what we're gonna do once we engage this Phoenix, we're gonna hopefully, you know, remove him from this fight. And once we do that, we will go ahead and engage. Ooh, I shot and he was turning in. That, that, that was a mistake. I don't know that we're gonna get any hits on that. Oh, we did. 1600 damage. <laughs> Not a whole lot of damage there. So we're gonna turn and we're gonna take ourselves to towards the north. This is gonna expose a large number of enemy battleships to us with their broadsides. So um, that that is a huge advantage, if you will, for us. Shot out there, only shot once, thinking, well, for sure. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, fine, we'll fire the other two guns. Hopefully that'll result. Yes, there we got a kill. It's Citadel, random Citadel, for like 165 damage. <laughs> Thanks, Wargaming and RNG. So the overall gunnery accuracy is not very well, it's not very good. Tur Traverse is a little on the slow side, but I mean, it's manageable. There are definitely far slower. Uh, and you'll get to see here a little bit of the long range gunnery problems that we have. Trying to, trying to encourage our Wyoming there to turn around because he's sailing whole log into their, uh, into their enemy fleet. Not really well supported. And yeah, 4,030 damage on a broadside parked Wyoming at 13.6k. Welcome to the story of this ship's life. <laughs> uh, if I would have had that accuracy on a Wyoming, I would have probably citadeled the other Wyoming, but that is what it is. Okay, so at this point we got ourselves... Oh, Isakaze bites a, bites a torpedo. And now back to our Wyoming, because he's sailing broadside and in reverse. Legend goes down. Ah, well, he was kind of turned real far. He was kind of really far ahead there, so <laughs> that stinks. And there again, only three hits out of all of that. 2,700 damage. Not exactly a whole lot. Here we have an unupgraded Wyoming. Should have relatively short range, although we are probably in range of him. We managed to not take a whole lot of damage out of this whole thing, which is nice. Okay, so lead and engage. Look at the dispersion, it's so bad. <laughs> uh, 2700 damage again. We're only up to 31,000 damage, but we got two kills. So, alright, well, we, we've got some hit points to work with here. Let's Let's try and close the distance on some of these ships, because we definitely need to. Now, that uh, Wyoming is now out of range, so that leaves us to engage other ships like the Slav, which we'll just go ahead and engage without prejudice. Hoping that we can get some hits. Ah! Well, we splashed his deck. This Clemson should probably stop shooting. That would be a recommendation. Go off detection! You can do it! Going, uh, going back towards the middle here, you can see this has opened up a large number of broadsides. Still trying to pay attention to this Izzy Slav because if we, we don't take him out, we're not able to take him out, um, he could potentially cause us a lot of heartache and headache. So the Izzy Slav, oh, it looks like he beached himself, so he's backing up. We'll go ahead and we'll throw some rounds down range. Whoa, 6,600 damage. That's, uh... That was a very good hit, very solid hit on him, and that's probably outside of that opening, uh, opening broadside against, or not opening, but the second broadside against that, uh, 
Konigsberg, in which we dev struck him. That's our highest damage roll so far. So Britannia is running away. We got ourselves this Wyoming still sailing broadside, still sailing broadside at extended ranges. These kinds of shots, not at really anticipating much in the way of damage, but uh, look at them come down. They just come down from the stratosphere. 8k. All right, now we're finally starting to get some damage rolls that are cooperating. And that's not a bad damage roll. I really want the Sizyaslav, though, because, uh, quite honestly, without him in this match, this match is going to get even more lopsided. So, once again, broadside Wyoming, longer range, engaging, praying for better accuracy than we currently get have. Ooh, that looks good. Now, yeah, 3,500. Kind of overshot him a little bit there, unfortunately. So now we're going to continue to push in. We got the Sizyaslav here, which we do need to take out of this fight. Especially since he has torpedoes out on uh, our Miyogi and nuked him. So that means he's fairly close. Oop, there he popped up. Okay, I'm thinking he's going to come around. Nope. Sizyaslav manages to take out our, Clem or our Nicholas there, so we'll shoot over the island at him. And secured that kill. So now we've got two battleships to deal with over there. We got a Wyoming as well. Uh, there is a Koenigsberg coming around the west side of the map, so we uh, definitely want to pay attention to that because he could cause us a lot of problems depending on how he plays his ship. So we got Orion and a Phoenix. Would love to engage that Phoenix and get him out of this fight. He's low on hit points. Got our lead out see there fired three shot three turrets he's got 3100 hit points left we got one normal pen and an over pen that wasn't enough to kill him okay well there's the Koenigsberg Wyoming taking a pot shot ow okay that hurt <laughs> apparently that Wyoming is having way better damage rolls than I am right now <laughs> okay so we're gonna we, we've already completed this turn so my goal ooh, Popped up. Can we get lucky and get a get a kill after he's disappeared? I don't know. I doubt it. But we got this other ship that we need to take care of, and plus we're taking damage ourselves. Apparently those shells did not find a way into that Phoenix, so we are going to focus our attention on this Koenigsberg while we draw in the Orion, who is without any real support at this juncture. So, Koenigsberg is moving kind of slow. He's also moving relatively broadside. And shots out, and... Uh, we, we did a fairly decent amount of damage. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, would have liked to have dev struck him again, but or dev struck another one, but, well, you know. Sometimes you don't get lucky on that. Aiming-wise, you know, like I said in the beginning part of this, the shell arcs are kind of... Eh, and so, if you're real used to U.S. battleships, the ship will feel like right at home for you. And down goes the Koenigsberg. So it's time for us to refocus our attention on this Orion. There is also Wyoming over there as well at longer ranges. Don't know what he's doing, but this Orion has bought into my feint to try and drag him in closer. As you can see, he's shooting at me, so we're going to continue on this turn if we can. And uh, keep turning, just keep turning. Managed to avoid getting Citadel there, did 4k to him. And apparently we're all wenches. I don't know. I... <laughs> okay. So Orion, in terms of armor protection, is halfway decent. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say that it's, it's great, but it's better than uh, Corbet, in my opinion. So again, getting our... Uh, Getting our guns lined up there, and trying to turn between each one of these salvos. I'm also trying to take out the front guns if I can. Oh, managed to not take any damage that time. Uh, didn't do a whole lot to the Orion, though. This Orion is shooting AP, which makes it significantly easier for you to angle between his shots. But like, like I said, the, the downside to this ship with its shell velocities and the way its guns are angled, you really have to play the, the turning circle to really take advantage of the ship and all of its uh, strength. So there we managed to get a 
Ooh, yes, that was a pretty solid salvo there. I think we would have gotten more than that uh, had we not had the... Um, if he had more hit points, we would have probably gotten that, uh, gotten a much higher damage roll than that. So now that all that's left is a Phoenix in Wyoming. So those ships are all the way over by their cap. We've got four kills. There's a Kraken on the line here. We've done 70,281 damage, only 50 shell hits. Three Citadels and 47 um, regular hits. I guess those aren't necessarily normal pens, but they are uh, a little bit different there. So continuing our push, that is one downside to the ship is how slow it is. 21 knots, that's all we get. I, if you're used to US battleships, the ship will feel pretty similar play just like you're at home. Would have been nice had the lower tier ones actually gotten the speed boost consumable in addition to the high tier ones, but well, beggars can't be choosers. So here we got a Wyoming that is uh, uh, doing the World of Tanks thing and sailing broadside and uh, reversing. Pretty decent accuracy there, and you can see 5,500 damage. Not a whole lot to write home about, but you know what? Better than nothing. So, Wyoming shotguns out at... Oh, what? Oh, me! Hey! Well, that was rude. Oh, look at what just popped up. It's a phoenix. He's only got 973 hit points left. Like, come on, guns. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We can get him. We can get him. Get him for the Kraken. No! <laughs> Corbet, your accuracy needs to cooperate. He slowed down, and we ended up missing that other salvo, trying to turn before he disappears to get him with this, this other side gun. <clears throat> he disappeared. Oh, he's back. We shot out. Oh, baby! We got an overpen for 800 damage. For 800 damage, we got an overpen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's got like 100 hit points left. At this juncture, why, this has to be the luckiest Phoenix player in the world. Like, can't even shoot over the island at him. Oh man, I, I, I wish. I really wish. <laughs> oh man. Somebody else has got to get this kill. We got two destroyers here that he's within range of that could probably engage him and kill him. Uh, obviously, the one should probably not be too aggressive, considering, uh... The Clemson probably shouldn't be too aggressive, considering there is a Wyoming here. Waiting for our guns to traverse. Aha! We saw something from a Wyoming. There he is. Okay. So we're, we're continuing to turn. Trying to bring all of our guns to bear on him, because he's broadside to us. We want to get maximum punishment for him. And... We get a Confederate in a 11,000 damage roll, but no Citadel hits on the Wyoming. Wyoming Citadel is kind of trolly. Oh, and down he goes. So we ended the match with 87,503 damage, four kills, a high caliber, and a dev strike. Not a whole lot else to really talk about there. 1,263 base XP. Yes, only uh, three quarters of a million potential damage. Not a whole lot of potential damage, but I hope this gave you a better idea of how the ship plays. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.